Hello and welcome to The Big Picture. The role of judiciary and how it reacts to various issues and situations has always been a subject of intense debate in this country and elsewhere in the world. However, in the recent past with the advent of 24-7 TV news channels and constant repetition of news and views, the pressure on the judiciary also has multiplied like never before. Though the judicial dictum to its practitioners is that they should only be guided by legal principles and dictates of their own conscience and not by the political debate around, one wonders to what extent the judiciary can stick to this principle. In fact, yesterday while delivering an address at the conference of chief ministers and chief justices, Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh went to the extent of cautioning the judiciary thus, and I quote, Fundamental and time-tested principles of law and natural justice must not be compromised to satiate the shrill rhetoric that often defines our political discourse and sometimes succeeds in drowning appeals to logic and justice. Quote closed. Obviously, some of the recent instances of judicial overreaction seems to have triggered this caution from the Prime Minister. Today, we will discuss all this while asking the question, is judiciary influenced by the political discuss, discourse happening around. To discuss this, I have with me K. N. Bhatt, a former additional solicitor general of India and a senior advocate in the Supreme Court, Professor Valerian Rodriguez from the Center for Political Studies, JNU, and Vinod Sharma, political editor, Hindustan Times. Welcome to all of you. Mr. Bhatt, you know, it is said that judiciary has to be completely impervious to the uh, dominant discourse which is happening around and look at things from a legal principles point of view. Does, in your own experiences in, in, in these last several decades that you have been practicing in the Supreme Court and other courts, do you see that kind of thing happening? Or do you, do you think the judges are more, are also amenable to the political discourse which happens around? Well, it is impossible for anybody to be completely insulated from the surroundings. And that too, today, unlike the 50s and 60s, when the media intrusion into the private life of somebody was much less. Even till 70s. In yeah, because you know, today, if you come home and accidentally switch on a television, something or the other which is coming up before the court tomorrow is discussed. Yes. This is much before evidence or the case itself is opened. Absolutely. Some amount of impression on the judge is inevitable, though it should not. I was told when I was began my practice some uh, 40, 45 years ago, that many of the classical judges never used to read newspapers also. In those days, mind you, newspapers were very few. Yes. Because the chances of their getting Influenced. influence are not very remote, so they wanted to avoid it. So. In addition, they never used to socialize as far as possible, don't mix with the people, social events, etc. Even today, most of the traditional judges do not socialize for precisely for this reason. Okay. So, the, what the Prime Minister told yesterday is in the context of recent events. Right. Some of them, for example, the December 16 rape case. Right. The moment it happened and the amount of publicity it got, I'm not telling about the right or wrong of it, the publicity got surely might have influenced somebody or the other to the extent that now the fear expressed that the chances of the people getting convicted is almost certain. That's what the feeling among Exactly. Them. So, I mean, I, Which would not have been the Mr. case earlier. Mr. Bhatt, I'll come back to you. We are joined in now by Justice V. N. Kare, the retired Chief Justice of India. Uh, welcome, Mr. Uh, Justice Kare. Justice Kare, the question is, uh, you know, uh, can the judge maintain a kind of a neutral stand in his decisions, you know, and not get influenced by the political discourse and debate around? That was that is the question being asked. You know, in your own in your own uh, experiences. As a, as a judge for, for a very long time, how, is, how do you insulate yourself? I have Mr. K. N. Butt here who says that, you know, it's very difficult to insulate oneself, but the judges in the past, to a great extent, try to do it. 
Well, uh, this thing is that your one is right when you say that he should be a neutral. Right. But sometimes, if you go by the decisions, the what time decisions, if you see the House of Lords and Pre Privy Council decisions, when there was Second World War, the principle of natural justice were denied. When Second World War was over, that decision was overruled. Right. Because that did not suit the system then. So sometimes what is prevailing, what is required for the country, for the people, interpretation of law by the court depended on that. But they, to that extent, they are definitely influenced by the what is happening in the society. Right. Otherwise, the effort is always been to it should serve a public purpose, a public cause, and public policy. That is that is the difference between the two. Right. But you know the the, the main the, the question today. The prime minister yesterday expressed some kind of a concern. Says that you know this shrill rhetoric that often defines our public discourse that seems to influence the decisions and he was saying that you know, each, you know how, how to what extent does this happen the, the concern expressed by the, by the prime minister do you think it is a valid concern that is what he has expressed me yeah but justice correct to you it's to you no I think the court has hardly concerned with the affairs of the uh, political scenario at all. But if it, it defeats the governance of law, if it uh, does not serve the public cause, if it does not serve the public purpose, definitely the courts are required to interpret law in those terms where it may enhance the prestige of law. Right. But you know, the, 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 the key question, Justice Kare, is that to what extent does the judges, the judiciary get influenced by the political discourse? This is the key question. You know, what do you think of it? You as a judge, to how how would you how would you insulate yourself from the public discourse which happens? Uh, all right, I am telling you. Yes, I am telling you that one of the principle of interpretation is suppose some there is a vagueness has come in a law. All law is not clear on a particular point. There are judicial decisions that one of the method of interpreting that law, which is a vague law, which is not clear law, or to harmonize the law, the courts always look into the debates which had taken place in the parliament while enacting law. Then from debate we call out the object, what the object was of the framing of the law, and they interpret in the light of those debates. So it definitely uh, is one of the principle and method to interpret law is what is the debated in the House of the Parliament. Okay, uh, I'll come back to you, uh, Mr. But you know he's sticking. He's saying that you know we, the, the judges goes into the parliamentary debates and things like that. But we are on a larger issue now, as you earlier mentioned, that the influence of the media on the judges. Uh, it depends upon the judge to judge. Number one. Some judges may be totally unconcerned about what is happening. But, you know, the, this what I told may be true of a Supreme Court or even a High Court. But down below... The lower judiciary. Lower judiciary, that is where the first sentence, order of sentence is passed. Absolutely. That gentleman sitting there will be simply scared to take any other view except what is so much focused in the media. Right. Because that is some of the things. You know, we ourselves have seen here Jessica Lal case and a few others. I don't want to catalog them. The media's interest ultimately changed the course of judicial this one. Ultimately, I mean, that is the impression at least I have yes. as a lawyer. Okay, um, Professor Rodriguez. See, the political discourse is something which, and as as we earlier discussed, the the influence of the media, the modern media, the modern day media with 24/7 news channels in all languages, all the time focusing on issues. You know, in your experience, in your uh, you know considered opinion, what is, how do you think this is influencing? Um, I I feel, of course, there is an influence of the media um, on judiciary. And the other instrumentalities well, of not governance. just the media, the, the the way the media carries the political discourse also. Yeah. Uh, there is definitely an influence, 
but I don't think that the Indian judiciary has generally, as a rule, has succumbed to the, the pressure that media or public opinion has exerted in India. There has always been a certain caution, and uh, the judiciary has tended to assert its autonomy um, over the years. I basically see the judiciary in terms of its relation to the public domain in terms of three major phases. Even in the first phase, when the judiciary was largely under the influence of broadly the political, partly because the political was constituted through the national movement and its principle, even then the judiciary has tended to assert significant levels of autonomy. And definitely it has been the case in the subsequent two phases. There are moments when the judiciary has caved in to larger political or public pressures. Right. So while the caution is well taken, I think the caution, I feel, should not be overexerted with regard to the judiciary in India. We know well, you see, the, there have been reports of the Law Commission which point to this phenomenon that uh, the media discourse, and which is also partly the political discourse, influences judges. You know, what's the most worrying aspect in recent years? It's of the speaking judges. You know, courts are expected to give speaking orders rather than having speaking judges. And this is not a problem related to India alone. It's a problem that is a global problem. Right. Now, when there is a vibrant uh, 24 by 7 media, uh, you see the court proceedings uh, are followed by the media proceedings on a daily basis. Right. And as, 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 as Bhatt was pointing out, even before the court proceedings start, there is already a yes. uh, discussion in the media so, about how it will go. And, and in many cases, uh, much of what has transpired in the court is not correctly interpreted. Uh, in the media discussions. And there has been a huge controversy over this. There has been a debate over this. And recently there was a, a hearing, regular hearing, uh, by the Supreme Court uh, on whether or not to uh, place a moratorium or a ban on reportage, daily or reportage, or whether there should be some guidelines, or whether uh, there should be some deferred telecast in the interest of justice. And I think that the interest of justice is uh, not always served by the kind of discourse that we have missed, witnessed. The one major casualty of this discourse has been the right to bail, right. which is the right. Jail is a rarity. Bail is a right. But nobody listens to this logic anymore because India, on account of various factors, some valid and some, <clears throat> you know, fomented, has become a country which is increasingly intolerant and which is not willing to give uh, any quarter for reform of the criminal or the person who has committed a wrong. Uh, you know, you see, see it in the case of Sanjay Dutt. People are trying to distinguish the penal aspect of uh, uh, the, the, the law from the reform aspect of the law. But that, that division has been so neatly uh, you know, sort of obfuscated by the debate. Uh, you know, so if the country, if most of the people want to see blood or are baying for blood, then at times you feel that, you know, you are witnessing what one, one reads about decadent Rome. So this is not a good no, you, augury you, for a modern you democracy. You think the judiciary, judiciary gets influenced by this kind of uh, discourse? You see, it has got influence. There are judges and judges. Yes. Yeah, there are some judges who wouldn't get influenced by this. Uh, but lately, with all humility, you know, I have tremendous regard for the judiciary in this country. One has seen judges pass orders which they have had to withdraw the next day. For instance, there was one judge who ordered the parliamentary panel to send its report to the Supreme Court. Now, that is something clearly in violation of the separation of powers under the constitutional scheme. So, when the quality of judges is declining, that doesn't mean that this is a rule. There are honorable exceptions. Uh, you know, we have had very great judges in this country, very learned judges, and they are actually the saviors in a difficult situation. Uh, but uh, there are 
uh, some bad apples in the basket uh, and that causes the problem. But the speaking judges phenomenon has to be curbed because a comment by a judge in an open court becomes the matter of debate, a full-fledged public, uh, public I, debate I, or a media debate. Absolutely. I want to get Mr. Bhatt in on this. Mr. Bhatt, this, is, this, is this has been a problem. There was this famous case I was reading about, the Sarla Mudgal, Mudgal case where the Uniform Civil Code, and then they had to withdraw it saying that, you know, this was not what we meant or thing. The Supreme Court had to, you know, this is just one of the instances, several other instances. Uh, as well, uh, the, the, the talkative judges, <laughs> what, what uh, Vinod said, uh, speaking judges means talkative <laughs> judges. They talk, and unfortunately, the media next day reports, the Supreme Court has said like that. Yes. It is not the Supreme Court. <laughs> It is Mr. Justice so-and-so of the cuff remark. So the reporters must say that, look, Mr. Justice so-and-so said it because it is a sort of a sensationalization. Because, for example, when uh, a student with a beard was not allowed to enter into a mm. college, the judge did not say it in his order. As we know, said it is not a speaking order, but he spoke out of term, saying that, we don't want to Talibanization of this country. And then, of course, another bench, including him, will have to say, that, like, sorry, we have been <laughs> misunderstood, etc., etc. But this is not being influenced by the media, but this is influencing the media because their name comes in the paper. Some people have that uh, Tendencies. Habit, tendency. But uh, your question to begin with was how far the quality of justice is yes. affected by the bail matter. We know this 100% right. That is a purely discretionary. And yes. and 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 also the in, in the recent past, the number of cases where we are seeing people are getting death sentences. You know, in, in the last couple of months, the, suddenly if you see that you know, more and more people are getting death, death sentences. Is also the, doesn't the, the, it seem the, to the have been influenced the, by the political the, discourse? The sessions court, which passes the death sentence, he doesn't want to take a risk. Yeah, they're taking this. Because then he said that, look, let me pass. Anyway, death sentence has to be confirmed by the High Court. Right. And thereafter, invariably, it goes to the Supreme Court. So the man at the starting point, he thinks that, look, well, it is safer to pass a death sentence. So there, there is a certain influence of the, pub, the public discourse which is happening on the judges. Uh, we, will, we, will, we will continue this discussion, but we need to go into a short break now. Please keep watching. We'll come back very soon and continue this very interesting discussion. Welcome back. We are discussing whether the judiciary is getting influenced by the political discourse happening around us. Let me go back to Dr. Uh, sorry, Justice Kare. Justice Kare, you heard some of the panelists here. Uh, Vinod was specifically mentioning about how you know the, the, the discourse gets affected. Mr. Uh, Mr. Bhatt also was talking about how the lower judiciary gets affected by the political discourse and the kind of uh, judgment or judgment that we, which we are witnessing now. There seems to be a clear uh, influence of the public discourse which is happening around us. Do you agree with that? I may say the judge is required to see a case, what is in the record, what is the law, not what is politically discussed. If he does so, I think that the, uh, that is not doing justice with the case. So my experience of 24 years as a judge of High Court, Chief Justice of High Court, Chief Justice of India have been, we have been never been influenced by the what has reported in the media and what is said in the media. Sometimes the media say something revealing correct facts, sometimes they exaggerate it, sometimes half lie and half truth, sometimes they centralize it. So you cannot have a yardstick that is going to influence. The judges are required and we, as a judge in Supreme Court, we go by what is in the record, what is the law on the point, not what the media says. No, the, but how do, you, how do you insulate yourself as, as a judge? <laughs> I'm asking you this question, you know, if you, can, if you can enlighten us. How does a judge insulate himself from this kind of media explosion which is happening? You know, how, how, how does a judge do it? He's expected to do it, fine. But... Is it possible is for a, anybody, uh, everybody uh, to do yes, it? Yes, that is one. That is one. Of, that is one of the quality of a judge. Agar if he could not uh, disassociate himself with the in, influence of the media, then he doesn't deserve to be a judge and uh, continue to be, uh, do justice. 
there are judges no doubt that one judge is some there are ideology he believes in particular ideology just like some judge were the pro labor some judges are pro corporate some judges are pro landlord some judges are taking a ideological view but that is a different thing and nothing to do with the political pressure or what is discussed in the politics okay what about the problem of speaking judges justice kare as you know uh, both of, both my panelists here were, were discussing about talking about the problems which the speaking judges think, or talkative judges so as mr so mr bad yes. says yes that is true sometime i do hear that something is said which is very totally unconnected with the case judge is supposed to say only those things which are relevant to the case what is relevant to the law and not anything which is unconnected that that habit and that habit should be i think deprecated okay mr but no but as i said right in the beginning the higher judiciary they are all trained to be completely insulated from whatever the noise is outside but what we thought about it is right in the beginning actually the judiciary's foundation is the lower judiciary that to in criminal cases but the problem of talkative judges or you know what you're talking about is not just confined to the lower judiciary no, it's, it's, it's a problem no, no, no. They, going right up to the higher higher level it is generally at the higher level that is uh, that is not the question here what i am telling is that the, the magistrate or somebody who has to grant a bail and refusal of bail will be a great injustice in that case they do get affected by the when you go to the higher judiciary they don't they may not care at all what happens that is the ground reality but, but i want you to uh, uh, you know judicial activism is it do you do you see do you see a connection between the judicial activism and this question which we are raising today about how political discourse influences the judiciary well judicial activism is something which is a, uh, at times a rudderless boat which direction it will go what will influence it whether it is the outside waves or something etc etc can't be said at all because it depends upon the judge concerned so otherwise generally speaking any this judicial public interest litigation regarding some x y z complaint about the administration they get greater publicity and i know for sure that many of the judges very keenly read it what has uh, transpired what has, what has been said and how it has been reported etc this has a tendency of influencing them as well as because they from the fact that they repeat such an activity time and again show that they probably enjoy reading it professor rodriguez you know this is the judicial activism to a certain extent it has been welcomed you know and and the thing is that you know it's 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 because of the executive's fault that the executive has not done what it it has it has done and that's why the judi the, this judicial activism has cropped up but do you see that ex influencing be, be, being a product of the uh, judges getting influenced by the political discourse i would make a two levels distinction um first is make a distinction between individual judges and their sensitivities and the institution as such right i feel the institution has kept to its sobriety by and large by and large and the sanity of the institution has been retained over the years and the second level of distinction i would make uh, following uh, uh, mr butt is the lower echelons of the of the judiciary, judiciary. and the upper echelons of the uh, judiciary while talkativeness might be you know an attribute of the higher, higher judiciary, judiciary uh, falling prey to local pressures particularly political pressures and mass media might uh, the lower judiciary might be much more prone to it uh, 
So okay. these distinctions, I think, are quite important to me. Absolutely. To yeah. Vinod, uh, last words to you. You know, in, in this whole discussion today, the focus has been on the media. The focus has been on the way the media uh, goes about doing things and the way it, it influences, the, whether it is, is it the intention of the media to influence the No, I think I find the reluctance of the Supreme Court to insist, intercede very amazing. You know, they have set certain paper qualifications in order to be able to accredit it to the Supreme Court, to cover the Supreme Court cases and proceedings. But there is no such criterion applied to people who participate in panel discussions on television. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. I mean, I just don't understand why the Supreme Court is reluctant to make a robust intervention in this case. You see, at times, it causes great harm to people even while the case is being heard at different tiers in the judiciary. Now, I have heard, you have opened up a completely no, new... Uh, I, have, I, have, I, have read, I have read judgments yes. by the lower judiciary which are cross political statements. I mean, they are like, you know, some kind of a John Doe speech, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, with the, the judge wants to let it out fully, you know. And also, I mean, it is at the lower judiciary, at the level of the lower judiciary, and that is where I think the high court has strong, strong role to play in order to, because they are the people who have administrative control over the lower judiciary, to in order to set things right in the lower judiciary. Okay. I remember. You see, we, are, we are completely running out, but I want to get Justice Kare last, Justice Kare last words to you. The, the, the concern expressed by the Prime Minister about yesterday, you think it is a valid concern and you think that, you know, the judiciary in this country will, 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 will take his caution seriously. No, the judge has more, judges are all aware of all these things. I think <laughs> the judges are not told to what to do, what not to do. They are trained people, at least those who are in apex court, yes. they are aware of the, what is the constitution, what are their territory, what is the parameters, and what they should say, what should not say. These are the things. They, they don't require any advice from uh, either the Prime Minister or from anybody and mostly the judges are not uh, pressurized or uh, uh, pressurized by what is happening, what are being talked in the politics. They go by what is the law, what okay. is the fact of the case. Okay, Justice Kare, on that optimistic note and, you know, we will, we will end this program. We hope that, you know, what you say it will be heard by the judges in higher as well as the lower judiciary. Thanks to all my guests, Justice V. N. Kare, Mr. K. N. Bhatt, Professor Valerian Rodriguez and Vinod Sharma. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue on the big picture same time tomorrow.